Hi, this is Marcos Torre Grossa. Um, this, what you guys are about to watch is a video of Marceau Garcia and myself uh, rolling at his academy in New York. Uh, I wanted to thank again Marcelo Garcia for inviting me out and having, I mean, having me at his academy and being able to roll with him. Um, the objective behind this video was to be able to give you guys some insight as to what my mental processes were while this role was transpiring and uh, kind of what was going down. So uh, let's go ahead and get, and get started here with the video. So here we begin our roll. I started jockeying for, for grips here. Um, this was our second roll, so I had a pretty good idea of what side I wanted to start passing to. I started passing to my left and tried to create some options by way of a leg drag hoping that he would react in a certain manner, but if you guys look um, here, he's really good about addressing uh, distance control. So right here, you're going to see I drop my right knee down just for a split second, uh, just for a split second, and then he takes me up and over to my right hand side. Again, when I'm leg dragging towards my left, um, he's really good about controlling the distance. You can see his right hand here on my collar, he's pushing away, creating just enough space uh, for me to make a mistake here, drop my right knee down, and with his left hand here, you can't really see it, but he controls and sweeps me out to his left. Now here, Marcelo Garcia takes me out to my right hand side, he comes up on top, and he starts a knee cut, addressing my grip there. He did a really good job of distance control here too as well. So now I enter into my spider guard system. This is where I feel at home, I love this stuff. Here you'll see as I enter in with my left leg, Marcelo just steps clean over the top of his left leg. I try to elevate here again and then he steps right over the top with his right leg again just kind of hopping over my guard uh, this is a big mistake on my part I probably should have uh, secured his pants with my right hand um, here I think we have kind of a mad scramble to uh, get control and then he tries a really hard cut towards my left hand side I should have noticed here um, that he and you guys will see later on in the video that he becomes very heavy on that passing towards his left side, towards my left hand side, uh, towards his right hand side, he becomes really heavy on that pass. And so here I try to keep my left knee up um, and my hips up to expose options on uh, my right hand side, which usually ends up being an umaplata or a triangle or something to that effect. And here you see Marcelo Garcia defend his, defend my umaplata attempt perfectly. Here we continue to see Marcelo Garcia defend my own plot, just perfectly posturing up, exactly what you need to do. And here I go back to my left uh, leg grip right here, my spider guard. Again, this is where I fed home. I, I feel real comfortable here. I love creating angles here. I almost uh, attack here from Marcelo's back, and I start moving into a bit of a leg wrapping, X guard um, position right here. Now, this becomes increasingly difficult. You guys will see as the, as the camera pans a little bit here, you'll see right about there that Marcel Garcia with his right hand is controlling my left sleeve. This makes it really, really difficult to get underneath him because I like to use my hands to grab the ankles, take them off balance, and create options. Uh, much like Marcel, Gar Marcel Garcia himself, he likes to uh, create options by grabbing the ankles and uh, straightening out the leg and pushing the hips away from the opponent. So this allows for him to keep his posture up really high and it keeps me in a contact, uh, it's constant, uh, kind of a frantic scramble to get uh, some measure of control, uh, which I'm not, I'm not ever able, ever able to um, address properly and, and acquire myself. So you'll see Marcelo Garcia kind of stepping towards his left, you know, stepping back with his, his right leg, and I'm never able to get the 50-50 in this position. And just at the right time, you'll see his left leg shoot out, and then he begins on the pass in the series. Take a look. All right, here we go. Uh, continuing on the position, you see Marcelo just stepping backwards with his right leg. He's keeping his base, keeping his calm, not doing anything drastic. He's just holding onto my sleeve, making it real difficult for me to to get into a proper sweep. I can't really secure a 50-50, so I try to retract my leg, push on his leg with my left um, to cut his leg across for a 50-50, and I still am not able to acquire it. He stands back up, still holding on to my left hand sleeve. And you'll see just, he's just stepping back with his right leg and BAM! He steps with his left leg out and he begins immediately trying to go for a low pass to my left hand side. Uh, at the time we were rolling I wasn't able to see that or address it properly. 
So here we start again. There's something that I wanted you guys to see here. You guys noticed that before uh, he had done this on my left hand side. Now on the right. So here you see me standing up here with the left. Um, my left leg comes up and I'm trying to move closer to close the distance and just as my knee comes down and hits the floor you see his right hand is on the back of my tricep. Um, boom! He starts he, he starts moving on his on a sweep to my left hand side. He had done it before on my right hand side. My right knee had come down earlier on in the match. I don't know if you guys remember but he dumped me to the side to his left hand side. This time he did the exact same thing but on my left hand side on the opposite side. Pretty impressive how dynamic he was and how ambidextrous he was. He, uh, I stepped up as my knees started coming down. You can see him pointing right here down with his uh, right arm. It was behind my tricep and he begins a butterfly sweep to my left hand side. Perfect timing, beautiful timing, uh, expertly applied by a master. So here moving forward you'll see Marcel. He tries to pass, sweep me again to my left hand side, uh, entering into his a very characteristic leg wrapping X guard and I see him controlling my right arm right here I notice right away this is bad so I'm, I'm yanking my arm out I'm trying to keep my lapels away so it has to limit his control I was waiting for him to start working the control on my hip and uh, it was either going to come in his left leg on the outside or the right leg on the inside right here uh, you guys will notice that right leg is going to come and push and that was the opportunity I needed to um, started dressing that leg with my other arm, my uh, left arm in this case. And uh, what I was going to try to do is stand straight up by pulling that leg and, and I've been working a lot of leg drags off of this. So I wanted to see if I can get my right control of my right leg back because you'll see that my, my foot is close to Marcelo's head. He's got great control with his left arm and I need to get my knee back to get control again of the situation. Having it so far away from my body and from my base was just really compromising my position so um, I wanted to try to leg drag off of that to see if I can expose a weakness in his game and you guys will see as we progress here forward that I try to posture up pull his leg across and Marcelo again uh, moves into another one of his power plays alright so here we go I'm, I'm trying to pull up on his leg get control of the situation again get my leg back in a position where I have my base Marcel goes back to his position, very strong leg wrapping, so I try to push again his right leg, uh, get, get, get my bearings back, be able to stand back up with my left leg, he's just doing such a great job of controlling my hips, and he goes back to that, that grip, that, that grip on my right arm, and you'll see my right arm pushing his left leg down to keep it away from my hip, I try to get some bearings back, he's just too powerful here, and uh, the sweep puts me back into my open guard. So here, I'm extending again with my left leg. This is again my power play. I hook, uh, Marcelo tries to knee cut here, and uh, here he tries to switch sides very quickly. Switching sides, um, again, going heavy towards my hip on my left hand side. This is something that repeated, and I, I didn't have a chance to observe it while it was happening. Now again, hindsight is always 20-20, so now I can see it, but um, I saw him really making a hard push to control my hips towards his right hand side or my left hand side and uh, again I try to defend this in an offensive manner by attacking the umoplat on his left arm right here. You guys will see that I'll put my left arm in front of his head, keep my left knee pretty high here and that's in an attempt to stop his hips from dropping and stop controlling. You'll see later on in the match that he does end up progressing to a much better position here but uh, my defense is here with Uma Plata, uh, with, an, with an offensive Uma Plata who was working good at least in the initial part of our match. I was pretty interested to see how he moves past that later on. Alright, so here uh, we're back with Uma Plata, Marcelo Garcia defending just expertly. He's pushing down on my left leg and he just postures up. I try to roll back behind him here to create some options on his legs, maybe go for a bear and bolo. Uh, again, he passes heavy to my left, again, trying to move to the hip, and he goes for it again. This time, he, uh, he achieves his goal. He gets inside on my hip. Um, I'm not able to create the distance in time. My distance control is not sufficient enough to stop him from getting in. You'll see his right leg kind of pushing on my knee right here. He's almost parallel to the ground, very comfortable. I felt like, you know, this is just a specialty of the kitchen, Marcelo uh, is just a master here and everything I did was digging me into a deeper hole. So uh, I'm, what I'm trying to do here is now find a way to recover guard, uh, 
get an underhook, and, and, and Mr. Garcia just did not give me an inch. Bam, and he snatches that right leg, that right arm over the top, and you'll see, uh, it, it, it's, it's really crazy, uh, the choke, how fast it comes on, but how efficient it is too. Uh, I never felt Marcelo Garcia squeezing, like using strength to get this to work. All he did was, that right arm came over the top, he snatched it up, and I literally could not move left or right. Like I tried to turn my, my head initially to the left to try to turn in towards him with an underhook. Um, and I couldn't do that, so I tried turning to the right, maybe thinking that there was a there was a weakness in that angle. There was just I couldn't turn my jaw, and it was amazing at how powerful that immobilization was at um, at freezing my whole body. I really couldn't move much at all, and the choke just sat in uh, very quickly, very efficiently, and that was it. That's all she wrote. So here I begin to start to. Contemplating another plan of attack. I'm tying my belt. I, we both kind of toss our belts, right? Not to waste any time. I wanted to take advantage of as much as much of the time I'm rolling with Marcelo Garcia as I could. So jockeying for grips here, and Marcelo, uh, you'll see right here, enters right back into the sweep to his left hand side. It's like a trigger for him. It's so so fast, so efficient. It's very very impressive. He uh, does a good job this time of controlling my right sleeve and again with my left arm I'm trying to uh, pry his feet off to get some balance but he's just such a master of the spot. He comes right back on top breaking my grips very efficiently to stop uh, my open guard and I decided to try something new went to close guard this time considering my open guard was just not having much success. I go for a couple close guard uh, changes in angle right here. I tried to go for a sweep. I was kind of thinking Uma Plata here but I knew he was on to it so I was thinking maybe upside down uh, De La Hiva. Uh, here he just starts stepping back. His base is so solid here, you know. Um, he opens up and enters in again off a knee cut. He uh, goes right back into uh, a hip control position. Again, very bad position for an open guard player. So right here I wanted to freeze real quick so that way I can kind of give you guys some insight as to what I was thinking. I had my right arm inside and I wanted to get my right arm as deep into his collar as possible. I also wanted to get my right foot underneath his knee. I wanted to do this in an effort to be able to elevate him towards my left hand side, uh, try to get him, try to bait him into coming back in towards me so I can maybe go for a back attack. I have a really sick back attack that I work off of this that I go over in, uh, in my app on, on the iTunes store. Uh, so I, I was trying to set that up, a deep grip on my right hand, right right foot underneath the knee uh, but he does a really good job you can see right here with his left hand at pushing my foot down and uh, neutralizing its efficiency so uh, you'll see as this progresses how he works his pass from here moving forward in this position you guys will see how I'm kind of trying to uh, pummel my right foot underneath his knee uh, but he just he has a really great control here with his left hand I'm trying to again create some space with my right arm try to elevate his head and just get a better angle on pummeling my foot inside. Marcelo, you'll see right here, just pushes it out. Uh, he steps over the top initially with an intention to pass and moves uh, right to a mount. Pretty, pretty sick transition on, on his part here. I just could never really get enough angle to elevate his knee here. You guys will see, I'll get my foot underneath just a little bit, but not enough to stop that right leg from coming over the top. Uh, very, very, very slick on, on Marcelo's part. Uh, now he, he stabilizes him out here and you guys will see my right hand here coming towards his pan. Um, this is a, it's a mount escape I've been using for the longest time. The Oompa at mount escape I always felt that left me um, exposed to chokes and arm bars and back attacks. So this is one of my higher percentage back, back um, sorry, mount escapes and I, I didn't really get a chance to flesh it out before it the match uh, ends with Mr. Garcia, but you guys will see how I'm kind of setting it up right here. I keep my feet close to my bottom, use my right hand to get his foot uh, straight, which which in turn gets his hips a little bit over the top of mine, and I try to create an angle to hip escape and get my other foot over the top. Check this out. Now, so you see as, as the match uh, progresses here, I'm using my right foot here to, to get his foot away from the body. Um, the right hand on the on the pants and I try to hip escape here to get my foot over the top and get a half guard position. Just as the, the match ends, Marcelo Garcia, he's on to me, he's on to my shenanigans. He was about to dress my hand there. 
So, um, what could I have done differently? Uh, this is this is really difficult. You know, I tried to throw some of my best stuff at Marcelo, uh, both gi and no gi. Uh, if you guys haven't had a chance to check out my no gi roll, then take a look at that. That's also on YouTube. Um, I tried to throw everything in the kitchen sink at him. Um, I used my spider guard, which again is, is my A game type stuff, and I was able to take him off balance a little bit and create some create some openings, but they weren't sufficient to be able to capitalize. I wasn't able to come up on sweep, sweep uh, positions because he was controlling just the right spots. It didn't feel like he was overexerting at all. He didn't feel like he was he was working too hard. He was always very calm, very patient, very meticulous, you know, very calculated. And this is a very difficult opponent to play with, you know. Um, I've seen uh, people, uh, you know, kind of stall him out in ADCC and try to, and try to neutralize uh, his game and I just don't like that type of game at all. I like to come in all my matches uh, straightforward and I'm always hunting for submission and uh, you know, I, I want to bring that game to the table. If there's anything I could transmit uh, to you guys today about my game is that it's, it's very open, very frank and I like, to, I like to play the game. I don't like to hang out and stall and play for points and, and slap hands and play patty cake. That's not really what I like to do. So. Um, you know, what could I do differently? You know, I'm, I'm definitely on to uh, keeping my knees on the floor. I felt that Marcelo was really good um, at doing that, exploiting the weaknesses on, on both sides. He did that both on my left and right hand side and exposed um, that weakness right there to enter into his leg wrapping and X card, which is uh, inevitably where he ended up sweeping me. So this is a real dangerous thing of this that uh, I will be looking forward to uh, working on in the gym, um, in the nogi matches, you guys. I mean, it, it, both in the gi and the nogi, you'll see that when he gets really low on the hip um, in his passing, it's very difficult to stop. Him. Um, so distance control is clutch. This is a good part about having the gi is that you're able to keep him at a distance. But uh, nogi, that's increasingly difficult considering you don't have any grips um, and any and any uh, postures that that keep him away. So keeping Marcel off your hips has got to be priority one. Keeping that distance control, uh, like grabbing the sleeves and controlling his hips and grabbing a pant is another thing that I think I could have done better was um, extending with my left leg on his bicep and grabbing a pant leg with my right hand. I felt like this would probably have been uh, much more productive for me, much in the way that uh, Leo Lowe's spider guard, uh, where he um, controls one of the arms uh, for instance, in my case, it would be the left arm. I'm sorry, the left leg uh, and the left sleeve grip um, on Marcelo Garcia's right hand, uh, and with my right arm controlling the pant leg. I think this would have been a lot more productive in sweeping Mr. Garcia, uh, at least creating some more options at getting underneath him and getting in, in his legs without him uh, changing levels and controlling my hips. Which is again, that was one of those focal points. I think was very dangerous. As our round with the gi progressed, he definitely was able to get in. Uh, past my omoplatas and controlling the hip and this changed the tide uh, definitively in his favor. So um, these are some of the things uh, I, I, I definitely want to focus on for the next time that we get the opportunity to roll. Um, I want to thank Mr. Garcia and all those at uh, MG in Action for placing the, the videos up and, and Marcelo himself for thanking, uh, th thank you very much Marcelo for having me out here at your academy. Um, I had the, the opportunity of a lifetime to meet one of my heroes and be able to confirm that he's just a, an awesome person both on and off the mats. I, uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. You know, uh, Paul Schreiner that uh, invited me out there, I was able to stay at his place. Thank you very much, Paul, for having me. Uh, Rafael Rosendo for the awesome training, you know, all the guys over there at MG. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity for you guys opening up the doors to me and, and uh, welcoming, me, welcoming me with open arms. Uh, to all you guys watching this video, if you guys are interested in checking out some more of my stuff, um, come to our website www.yamasobjj.com or you can follow me online on Facebook under Yamaso or Twitter uh, at Marcos Yamaso. I look forward to hearing from you guys. If you have any questions, please place them in the comments below. I'll do my best to be able to address them in a timely manner. Again, thank, thank you very much guys for watching the video and I look to, forward to hearing from you guys very soon. Take care.